Welcome to our official grand opening. First full day of business. We're in this afternoon. We shall be closing our doors for the final time. <clears throat> so for the best bargains, be sure and shop just as absolutely early as possible. If not sooner. Now the rest of the news. There was once a man who lived on a ruler. When he lived at one inch, he dreamed of going east. And when he lived at two inches, he wanted to go south. And when he lived at three inches, he imagined himself in the clouds. And when he lived at four inches, he thought of being underground. Then when he moved to five inches, his dreams of such travel began to diminish. And by the time he reached six inches, he surprisingly found himself intently interested in the nature of the area around six inches. <laughs> the very place where he was. Those on the inner voyage are the only ones who actually go anywhere. After taking a full survey of his mental life up to that point, one man said to the various thoughts that had run through him thus far, you guys are going to metaphor me to death, or even worse, to distraction, to the degree that I ultimately accept your clever verbal interpretations of what life is about, rather than the plain direct seeing of what it is. Those seeking that different, wondrous relationship with the mind must, in the beginning, dance with words, but they eventually turn out to be the kind of date to have fun with, but not to marry. <laughs> in a certain cave, in a certain mountain, everyone is given a light, and many go on to try and study the nature of their light by the only source of light by which to study, but the only source of light by which to study is the light they already have. In a certain cave, in a certain mountain, everyone is given a light, and many go on to try and study the nature of their light. But the only source of light by which to study is the light they already have. What can come from such? On one planet was a man who unsuccessfully spent his entire life attempting to rid his yard of weeds. Problem was that they weren't weeds. Mm -hmm. Questions of good, of, of good and evil are not matters to be dealt with by amateurs. There is a place you can visit that is curious in several ways. First is that you can't seem to just go there anytime you want. Second is that no matter how much you'd like to go there, as long as you'll simply sit around and think about it, you will, for that same period of time, Forget about how much you wanted to go. And third is that just thinking about it can be so pleasurable as to eventually replace any effort to actually go there. And upon hearing of this, one hippo, partially submerged in a pool, muttered under his breath to a pal. That sure seems unfair that humans can engage in such wondrous affairs and we can't. And after a reasonable stillness and silence, his buddy muttered back, Are you sure that unfair is the operative word here? Take a look at the world of man, then take a look at us. And with that, the first one slowly slipped completely underwater, letting the leisurely arising bubbles stand for his response. In a certain cave, in a certain mountain, when you attempt to study a verb, it becomes a noun. And then as you study the noun, you forget what it originally was, and you are left observing something no longer in its operative condition. What can result from such? The mightiest conqueror of them all was a king whose warriors, when they fought, only fought, and did not think at all. And when they thought, did not but thought. 
Myth tells of some birds from another solar system who once visited Earth and were amazed by the fact that humans find themselves to be sick in several manifestations which only survive by them ignoring the obvious immediate cure. But birds, I should add, no matter their home base, do not recognize want as a synonym for can't, which is why they can fly and we can't. But that, we can buy things on credit and they won't. So there. One doctor's notation regarding geography and existence. It seems to me that you must live in one state or the other. Well, that's how it seems to me. Myth says that there is a lab at the center of the earth, wherein they analyze all of the problems of the planet. The secret core of the myth goes on to say that this analysis is the cause of all the problems. One man developed a belief that if he could but stop on his own foot in precisely the right fashion, that from this act, all blessings would flow. One man started out hunting birds and ended up collecting worms. A man had a garden in which his passion fruit plant fed from the wrong soil. He cut it off therefrom. So should you. Many people have the feeling that their present problem is that they are stuck in some particularly unprofitable place or the other. But here's how it really goes. Thinking about there being such a problem place is to be stuck in the stuckness. One rabbi's notation regarding attention and its more profitable directions. It seems to me that the only reason to study the Holy Scriptures is to get your mind momentarily off yourself. At least that's how it seems to me. Two kids were talking and one of them says, What's more fun than doing what you want to in life? To which the other responded, Knowing what you want to do. There is a land only to be found when you sail off the edge of the earth. Wherein creatures grow up backwards in time, going from old and brittle to youthful and pliant. And truth is, it's not that far away, for everyone has the edge of the planet right with them. Just look up, and there it is. A non-standard peak at the possible training of domesticated pets who may be occupying the same residence as you. If you keep calling a dog a cur, he'll growl at you. And as long as he growls at you, you'll continue to think of him as a cur. Yes, that was a non-standard peak at the possible training of domestic pets, etc. The original headline on this story, by the way, concerned motorcycles until it was realized that the word motor herein was unnecessary. The simple with big muscles believe that weakness is the question and strength the answer. While the simple with much thinking believe that ignorance is the question and knowledge the answer. But there are a few always around who see it as a matter of Questions are the question, answers are the answer, and yes, someone did bring salt-free ketchup to the picnic. For a short while, last Wednesday, one man had this picture of himself. I am in a washer, in a dryer, on a merry-go-round, on an endless assembly line. I'm a busy little rascal. <laughs> to what purpose? I don't seem prepared to see. He, amongst others of his species, sometimes finds it helpful that the weekend so closely follows midweek. A boy asks his father, is there something in particular that each of us should be doing in life? If you think there is, he replied, then asked the lad, is there actually nothing in particular that any of us should be doing in life? 
Not if you don't think there is. He responded on cue. Once upon a time, there was a man who wanted to ask life this question. Recent discovery in the world of engineering is reported by engineers on another world. There are two ways to stop trains from running through a tunnel. One is to stop the trains from running, and the other is to close up the tunnel. It is good to access news from other planets concerning other creatures who, by virtue of their diverse nature, are able to make such mortally inconceivable discoveries. And now this item regarding leisure time here and there. I hate to call them parochial rubes, but what can you say about the intellectual vistas of people who spend their vacations visiting places where they already live? A man had a radio. The radio was special. The radio was special because it only picked up one station. The one station it picked up was also special. The station was special because everything it broadcast was about the man. If you ask me, the opening line of this story should be, shouldn't be, a man had a radio, but rather, a radio had a man. <clears throat> and now this story regarding avocations here and there. I am loath to dismiss them as mere fools, but what can you say about the range of intellectual interests of people whose leisure activities are indistinguishable from those of their work? Wasn't a similar item earlier presented? Just wanted to see if you were paying attention. Well, that's a pretty rotten thing to bring up, I must say. Hmm. To change, dare we say, improve life in the city for humans, one man offers these recommendations. That the fire chief be an elected physician, that anyone wishing to practice dentistry must be a qualified skydiver, and that everyone be forced to have a twin brother or sister, whether they want one or not. Something to think about, I'd say. For those who don't care to be themselves as they are now, to be yourself, you must prefer to be yourself. And to prefer to be yourself, you must believe that certain thoughts are preferable to other thoughts. And there you are. That's the story of the game. What's your next problem? A poem for those who haven't cared for poetry thus far. A man looked in the mirror and saw himself. He looked in his mind and saw himself. He then said, hey, what's going on here? Here is how one man has been attempting to direct his days. Hack at the roots, pick up the limbs. Hack at the roots, ignore the limbs. Hack at the roots and nothing else. Just keep hacking at the roots. And then one guy's college of directional knowledge has as its motto, poison runs uphill, poison can by God run back down. A question one man recently has been pondering. Does the body have an individual self? And if it does, without a mind, would it be aware of it? The twist of his lip and the turn of his eye gives hint he suspects he may be on to something good. One man so pondered to himself. Is there a better state or statement of awakening than an undisturbed mind? When I began, he tells us, I had a much more exotic picture of what a greater state of consciousness would be. But now that my experience has caught up with my dreams, I find no description of that goal, as I presently perceive it, than that of having a mind undisturbed. It seems nice and somehow familiar to have traveled such a route going from a mystical imaginer of magical conditions to being a satisfied customer of all that is plain and natural. Plus, as it seems now, nothing is more fascinating and magical than the naturalness of everyday life, now that I see it without the disturbance 
of the mind. The expanding realization tends to make one turn loose where one had held on and to hold on where one had turned loose. With increased time spent in that land of unequaled opportunity, one tends to act where one had previously been still and to be still where one had previously act. The Farm Lab Report Soured milk is cured when to it no longer any thought is given. Trying to get to the bottom of this by listening to someone talk about it is like being in a crash with another moving vehicle. And if luck is with you, a serious one. And one man mused, well, even if I don't know what I'm doing, my mind does. One night, someone slipped in and stole one man's mind. Later, someone asked him how he could tell. <laughs> the sailing of life. After growing up on the choppy, shallow waters of a small local lake, one man discovered an ocean, a notion of infinite depth, limitless boundaries, and eternal calm. A notion in which was carried all he'd wanted to know. A man told his son, there is no enlightenment until you look in that dark closet correctly and see that it is empty. After many years of many struggles with many methods from various directions, one man has it all presently summed up to himself in two words. Just don't. He says that from his current understanding of what needs to be done, this covers it. And though particular words may be true, error can still arise from their reading. So, no matter what I do, it's still up to me. That's right. No matter what you do, it's still up to you. And the coroner in one Euro city refers to the post-mortem condition of those who die while pissed as frigor mortis <laughs> and tags their toes with a note that says, you can quit thinking now.